Joining us now for more on the Supreme Court ruling and what could be the first gun legislation in Congress in three decades is California Democratic Senator Alex Padilla. Senator, thank you so much for your time tonight. First off, California is America's most populous state. You were born in Los Angeles, which is, of course, one of the largest cities in the country. You've said that this ruling will make communities less safe. What concerns you most about the impact of the ruling on, on large cities like Los Angeles? Uh, well, look, first of all, I think the Supreme Court ruling uh, is uh, uh, misinterpreting the Constitution and will absolutely make our communities less safe. Uh, we've seen, particularly in states like California, that smart, the common sense gun safety laws uh, make a difference by saving lives. The statistics do not lie. Uh, the uh, the rates at which you see uh, mass shooting incidents, for example, and the number of people in California who die as a result of gun violence is significantly less than states that have much looser uh, laws and restrictions when it comes to gun ownership uh, and gun purchasing. So I think this uh, Supreme Court ruling, uh, really the extreme majority of the Supreme Court of uh, issuing this ruling uh, threatens a lot of the gun safety measures in not just states like uh, the state of California, but other states around the country. And that's why. And, and particularly shocking on a day that the United States Senate is on the verge of taking the first significant action to improve gun safety in nearly three decades. California has one of the most restrictive concealed carry permitting rules in the country. And while this ruling does not erase that just overnight, are, are there areas that the state is already looking to shore up the permitting process while still trying to be in compliance with the court ruling? Uh, absolutely, because we take it so seriously. Uh, Governor Newsom has been a national leader on this. Our Attorney General, Rob Bonta, just today, and I'll read from his uh, statement, uh, is already working with the legislature to clarify where concealed firearms are forbidden and enumerate the qualifications required for obtaining a concealed carry permit. So what you said is a very important for the people watching in California. The existing laws are still on the books and will still be enforced. Uh, but in anticipation of a potential legal challenge to the current law, the legislature will act quickly uh, to uh, uh, make sure that uh, California laws will uh, stand up to that test. And uh, despite the Supreme Court uh, ruling uh, will continue to be in place in California. A lot of conversation right now, which you just touched about on, is that that language in, in the ruling that allows for handguns not to be carried in, quote, sensitive places. Does the court need to be more specific as to what those places are? For example, we know guns are not allowed in schools, courthouses, and other government buildings. But what about Dodger Stadium, for example? <laughs> right. Well, I'm sure that those conversations took place behind the scenes among the Supreme Court justices, and they did not. And so, uh, once again, leaving it to uh, the common sense of the California legislature and the governor uh, and many city officials around uh, the state of California to make those determinations. Uh, it is common sense. That's why the smarter gun safety measures uh, is so uh, popular amongst the American people, regardless of political party. There's broad support for, you know, where guns, uh, not just assault weapons, but even uh, handguns should not be allowed. Uh, we know uh, schools, no brainer on that, uh, but large uh, public venues, uh, that that, that uh, is more than uh, logical, more than common sense. And you touched on this too, but I just want to go one step further. You know, tonight some people are saying that it's one step forward and, and several steps backward as, as you and your colleagues in the Senate are working on the first federal gun legislation in decades. It could be on the president's desk before the end of the week. Does this Supreme Court decision kind of take the wind out of the sails of this gun reform uh, set to pass Congress? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think it takes the, the, the wind out of the sails. I mean, don't get me started on the Supreme Court. We've seen what they've done to voting rights. We know what they're on the verge of doing when it comes to reproductive rights uh, and uh, uh, illogical, wrong in my opinion, ruling today on uh, uh, concealed weapons. All the more reason why Congress Hmm. needs to continue to do its job. The United States Senate, despite the challenges of the filibuster, despite the 50-50 the split in the Senate, uh, is on the verge of historic action tonight uh, to improve gun safety through enhanced background checks for gun buyers under the age of 21, closing the boyfriend loophole to better protect uh, victims of domestic violence or others uh, at risk from uh, violent abusers, uh, and funding, significant funding for mental health 
services throughout the country. Uh, this measure will save lives. And as soon as this is done, uh, I know I'm going to continue the fight. So many of us will continue the fight to ultimately ban assault weapons uh, on the streets of America, large capacity magazines and more. A recent polling on this issue from Gallup found that two in three Americans want laws covering the sales of firearms to be stricter. Uh, a recent poll also found that six in 10 Americans think that abortion should be legal in most or all cases. But as we know, the court is poised to rule on Roe v. Wade as soon as tomorrow. Do you feel at all that the court has lost touch with the, the average views of Americans? And, and if so, is there anything that can be done about it? Look, I, I do certainly think that uh, there is a disconnect uh, for anybody who's concerned about the uh, uh, public confidence in the federal judiciary, not just the Supreme Court. We have to acknowledge how the, the federal judiciary was stacked under the previous administration and why, uh, as a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, I've been working with my colleagues and President Biden uh, to identify and nominate and confirm uh, better perspectives to uh, the federal bench. Uh, uh, not just uh, the incoming, uh, soon to be Justice Kataji Brown Jackson at the Supreme Court, but at circuit courts across America, district courts across America. Uh, representation matters, not just uh, in the executive branch, not just in the legislative branch, but on the judiciary, clearly. Senator Padilla, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.